Welcome back to the show. Today's topic is one that I am personally very interested in, as are millions across our nation. Why? Because we're women. Today we're going to discuss the very real but rarely talked about Canadian phenomena of abortion bullying. Perhaps you've never heard this term before, so let me break it down for you. Simply put, abortion bullying is the act of pressuring, coercing, badgering, harassing, verbally abusing, emotionally abusing, or physically abusing a woman into an abortion that she does not want to have. In the age of women's empowerment and choice, you would think that something like this would never happen in Canada. And yet it does, all too frequently. The problem is that up until now, women have been afraid to speak out because very often those who bullied them into an abortion remain as powerful figures of influence in their lives even after the abortion. They are husbands, boyfriends, parents, or other authority figures in their lives. Most women who are victims of abortion bullying simply sweep the pain under the proverbial carpet and hope that it goes away. The problem is that it doesn't. It lingers. It haunts and has a tremendous impact on women all across this nation. In 2010, when the issue was being brought forth in the House of Commons by Member of Parliament Rod Bernouge, a study was quoted which stated that 64% of women who had abortions reported feeling pressured into it. Repeated studies have shown that the number of women that would choose to keep their baby rises dramatically when they are in a supportive environment. It influences everything. Stats Canada reports that an estimated 100,000 abortions happen annually in Canada. So if the 64% statistic is accurate, then this means that as many as 64,000 Canadian women may fall victim to abortion bullying every single year. Now, let me insert a little common sense commentary here from my personal experience. You know, about 10 years ago, I had the honor of doing humanitarian work in the nation of West Africa. It borders Ivory Coast. And at that time, children were being recruited by rebel groups as child soldiers. When these rebel groups wanted to break the children, they would do so by forcing them to kill someone that they loved. They would be forced to kill their mothers, their fathers, their grandparents, siblings, or even babies. It was absolutely inhumane. The result was that these children became emotionally traumatized, broken, vacant. It's common sense, really. Being forced to kill someone that you love would be immeasurably emotionally and mentally damaging. As a woman and a mother myself, I can personally think of nothing more painful than being forced against my will to kill one of my children. It's unthinkable and completely counter to the core of who I am. I simply can't imagine it. And yet it happens to Canadian women every single day. How do I know? Because I've sat beside several Canadian women who have told me just this. And that's why I felt motivated to do this show today. It was a shocker to me when I began to realize the depth of this issue in our nation and the perplexing lack of willingness in our leaders to talk about it, never mind address it legislatively. For some of us, today's show will be an eye opener. For others, it will be a validation, a validation of pain that perhaps you've carried for decades. Abortion bullying is wrong, and it needs to stop. On today's show, I have two courageous women with me in studio who are willing to share their personal journey. They are my heroes. Their names are Victoria and Toyin. They have a story that Canada needs to hear. So let's give them not only our attention, but let's give them our hearts.